George's nose. Hurry, hurry, or I lose the tide. Come on. He gives me the shudders. Do what he says. That's the whole cargo, Monsieur Scarecrow. Your payment, Captain. the lights and go. You all know your orders. Hellspike, curl you. Follow me. Ah! There's nobody hiding in here, sir. We headed them this way. They must be around somewhere. They vanished. What are they, ghosts? No, oh, no, they were real enough, sir. But where the devil are they? Search the place again. Nobody here. They're gone. They're miles away from where our lad should be by now. Light the lantern. for your capture thereafter, sir. Not the contraband we landed. John, give us five minutes start. If you don't hear any shooting, then you two can go on your way. understand why you'd allow riffraff like this in your coach. Christian charity knows no social barriers, my dear General. The man seemed ill and tired and asked my help. General Pugh's right, though, my lord. You take chances. And the marsh abounds with the gentlemen at nights. Gentlemen? Well, that's what they call the smugglers in these parts, sir. Pack of scoundrels. I give them gentlemen. Eh? I have my briefing here from the War Office and Customs and Excise. We have plans to smash these gentlemen, my lord. Well, the whole countryside protects them, General. Their friends are everywhere. I don't envy you your task. No, I relish it. The law enforcement's been too slack down here. You'll see a change, I promise you. Oh! 
hold there in the king's name! Whoa! 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 What's this? Why are we stopping? Huh? We're looking for a... Sir! General, sir! Well, what are you looking for, Sergeant? An escaped prisoner, sir. Convicted for preaching treason. Was to be hanged at Dover in the morning, but he... He got away, sir. Uh, treason? Yeah, an American. From the colonies, my lord. You, there! There he is! After him! No sign of him, Mr. Brackenbury. No, sir. The impertinent rogue. Sergeant, continue the search. Sir. Sure. Forward! You are Vicar. Brandy, 19 bales of silk. Captain Delacroix. On Thursday, it's the Dutchman's turn to deliver. Uh, doing well, Sexton. Why do you go on taking these chances, Vicar? You're not getting rich on it. And since they don't know, the parish don't thank you. Oh, they can live and clothe themselves and their children and pay the taxes in a countryside bled white by the King's Parliament, which represents them, and which buys and sells votes as if they were dealing in cattle. No, you can't change the way of the world, Vicar. No? Unjust laws can be altered as well as made by men. There's a new spirit in the world, Nips. Taxed out of existence, robbed of their independence by the King's government, the people must fight back how they can. Well, men can't beat armies, sir. Ideas can. Faith can move mountains. What we're doing here is just a pinprick, but a thousand pinpricks put together will... So... Who are you, stranger? Gently, lips. Dr. Sim. Mother Hathaway sent me, sir. There are troops out searching for me. Why, what have you done? You're an American, are you not? Yes, sir. I've been branded a traitor and sentenced to death for preaching sedition. You should know this because I ask for sanctuary. Sedition? That's what King George calls our wish for freedom and independence. Yes. I can't deny you sanctuary, Mr. 
Bates. Simon Bates, sir. Mr. Bates. But it would not be safe for either of us to hide you here. You'll give me up? No. Uh, Mips, take him to Mrs. Waggett's Inn. My sexton will know what to say to her. She'll hide you till the coast is clear. You say nothing. Then take this, sir. I stole it in my escape. Stole it? Why? I thought to get it to someone hereabouts. Uh, a man I heard about in prison. I think they call him the Scarecrow. It concerns him. I was going to trade it to him in the hope that he'd help me in return. For all I hear, I don't think you'll find him. Many have tried and failed, Mr. Bates. Ah, he's like the devil himself, they say. Riding the marshes like a ghost. He comes and goes, they say. Nobody knows I'll where. I'll deal with or... this if I can, but you must go and quickly. Thank you, sir. And God bless you. Quickly. <laughs> General Pugh, dispatch of troops, subjugate the whole marsh area, whatever means necessary. Well, well. I'm giving you fair warning, Sir Thomas. And if you're justice of the peace in these parts, you want to see justice carried out, mine or any other. And it hasn't been up to now, has it, eh? Mm. Are you telling me my duty, sir? I'm a blunt man. I say what's in my mind. You're the law here, and the law is being flouted. Revolutionaries and smugglers walking the roads. Wasn't I robbed last night not ten miles from here in your district? In your parish, parson? Very well, then. You wait and see my justice. I don't care for your manner, sir. There's a definition of a gentleman that says he's one who never wittingly gives offence. And what do you think of that, sir? Hmm. And my definition of a good soldier, sir, not having had my commission bought for me by a gentlemanly father, but having made me own way in the army, is one who achieves his aim and gets results. And the end justifies the means. Father. General. And what means do you intend to use, sir? My son John, General. Then know that everybody has a price, young man. And for the price of freedom from the harrying of my troops, someone will come forward in the end and inform against this smuggling fellow, this scarecrow as he calls himself. And I'll not only be using troops either. What then, General? I must warn you, I'm afraid, that the men of this parish are sturdy, independent folk. They uh, do not frighten easily. And they're women? Women, sir. Women? You'll frighten women? I'll do whatever I think fit to achieve my purpose here. I think the women will talk when they start to lose their menfolk. The Navy needs sailors. And I've asked for the press gangs, whose job it is to get them to come and help themselves here in the King's name, and none too gently. General Pugh! Father, Don't keep no. out of this, Kate. Press gangs? Don't dare mention those blackguards in this house. In fact, sir, I've had all your talk I can stomach. Good day to you. Sir Thomas? Well, what have I said wrong? My brother was press-ganged into the Navy, sir. Clubbed insensible and dragged away to sea on his 18th birthday. Four years ago. And no word from him since. Now can you understand my father's feelings? I can, Miss Banks, believe me. The Navy needs men and must get them how it can, Mr. Brackenbury. Do you deny that? No, sir. Then hold your tongue. Thank you for your hospitality. If I upset your father, I'm sorry for it, but I'm under orders, and orders are written to be obeyed. Madam, Dr. Sin, Master Banks, good day. Your men of the marshes have asked for rough treatment, and that's what they're going to get. I tell you, I will not tolerate your troops burning cottages on my land. Why not? Because the people here are my people, General Pugh. My family have been squires of Dimchurch for 200 years. I'm acting under orders that you're under, too, to maintain the law. You're justice of the peace. Peace, yes. And you've brought war here. This is a war against time. 
Offering a reward for the capture of the scarecrow fellow who leads this rabble has been useless. Yes, and so will be burning. Terrorizing. My people hate you. All right. I'll make a bargain with you. Hmm? I'll call off my men if you'll help me try another way. Yes? Well? Now then. The Marsh people share equally the proceeds of these smuggling runs. That's the story, is it not? So, you're the squire here. Who among your tenants has been behind in his rents and then paid up recently? Suddenly, inexplicably perhaps, well? Yes, I see what you're getting at. I'll go through my accounts. Yes, do that. Give me the names and get the fellows round to your house for questioning. They won't suspect anything if you ask them there. Then you leave them to me. There's one that comes to mind. You might make a start with him. Uh -huh. A difficult fellow, bad farmer, to a widower with two sons and an old mother he treats none too well. Ransley's the name. Right. He'll do for one. Send for him. Very well. You'll be round at my house tomorrow morning. But stop this burning, do you hear? Yes, seven, sir. Come in. Joe Ransley, sir. Morning, sir. Joseph Ransley, North Farm, Bonington. You're not much of a farmer, are you? Three years of bad harvests, the sheep flocked down to 60 head. It's poor land, sir. I do my best. But you've stayed on it. You got six months behind with your rent and suddenly paid it. And you've been paying it ever since. Yes, sir. Well, I... How? Oh. I've been selling off some of my sheep, sir. <laughs> sir Thomas never questioned it, sir. No? Well, I do. I don't think you sold your sheep, Ransley. I think you're a smuggler. Smuggler? I'm an honest man, sir. Yes. You suddenly raised money from selling sheep. Where? To whom? Prove it with dates and bills of sale. I don't keep no bills, sir. Don't try lying to me, Ramsey. You're paid with smuggler's gold. You know who I'm after. The man who leads you, pays you off. I don't know what you mean, sir. Oh, yes, you do, and I'll give you a simple choice. I'll throw you into jail on suspicion, and I'll keep you there for questioning until you rot. Oh, jail, I'll sir. Finish. Or you'll turn King's evidence. Tell me all you know about the Scarecrow smuggling gang. Their movements, where they meet and when. Nobody will know you talk, Ransley, but it's you or them. I don't know nothing, sir. I swear I don't know. You're under arrest. No, no, wait, sir, wait. Well? I said I don't know nothing, sir, and I don't. But I may be able to find out, sir. I'd try if you'd give me a little time, sir. I'll give you 48 hours. You'll either come forward with the names of the men you know to be in this madman's gang, these so-called gentlemen of the marshes, or you can rot in jail. You've got 48 hours, Rams, you understand? Now, get out. Yes, sir. I'll find out all I can, sir. You had better. But that's what I heard, sir. And one trait is enough to get you hanged. The rest of us as well. Mm. And there's a shipment due from France tomorrow. Uh, General Pugh is staying at your father's, you say? <laughs> your head's really in the lion's mouth, isn't it? Oh, they don't notice me, sir. You're going to let me ride with you tomorrow night, aren't you? No, I'm afraid not. It's too risky. I don't see why. I said no, and you'll obey orders. Your task is to keep your eyes on General Pugh. Yeah, what about Ramsley, sir? He's under orders for tomorrow's run. Ramsley's one of my men and has to be protected. I'm going to Bonnington this afternoon, see what frame of mind he's in. Mrs. Ransley, nice to see you getting about again. Thank you, Vicar. I've, uh, I've brought something to cheer you up. Oh, Vicar, you shouldn't. And to come all this way. Oh, I'm a big parish, Mrs. Ransley. 
Not as big as your heart, Vicar. You're too kind. Well, how are you? Joe and the boys looking after you properly? Joe? My stepson looks after himself, sir. He don't care for nobody else. Oh, that can't be true. Whatever comforts we have here, sir, me and the boys is no thanks to him. It's because of the... You won't say I told you. I'm not supposed to tell nobody. I'm as secret as the grave, Mrs. Ransley. You know that. It's because of the scarecrow and his smugglers that we ain't in debt no more. And Joe's one of them. I know it. Surely not. That villain. He's no villain, sir. To us poor folk. Believe me, sir, if it weren't for him, there's many hereabouts would starve. Joe would betray the scarecrow himself. I heard him today telling the boys, making them agree to what he's going to do. They're afraid of him, sir, and I'm... Well, Vicar, you wanted to see me? Uh, just to say good day to you, Ransley, and I, I brought these few things for your mother. Stepmother. Time for your rest. Upstairs. Yes, Joe. Yes, Joe, yes. I'm going. I'm going. Can I get you a glass of brandy before you go, Vicar? I thank you. Yes, you may indeed. Oh, Vicar, I want to... Take care of yourself, Mrs. Ransley. Thank you, sir. I'll call again. God bless you, sir. And you, Mrs. Ransley. Well. Oh, very generous with the brandy, my friend, at the price it is today. Ah. It's a bigger price than you think. I regret to say that a great deal of it in this parish has been smuggled in by some misguided men under the leadership of this, uh, this scarecrow fellow. I don't know about that. Scarecrow, scarecrow. Why don't nobody talk about somebody else? I'm surprised that among all the men who work for him, none has betrayed him yet. Ah, because many of them are scared of him. That's why. Otherwise, they would betray him. I don't know. I don't even say and find out. As many men don't want to spend the rest of their lives in this part. Some have no choice. But there's ways and means of getting away. Don't you forget that. I've got plans. Well, never mind. Thank you for calling, Vicar. Good health. Well, I must get on my rounds. I've a busy afternoon ahead. Oh, so aye. Um, good day to you, Ransley. Good day to you. And goodbye. You, George, load everything we can take on our cart, and you help him. Take it up to the old host house at Noel Hill. I'll meet you there. Dad, what are you planning? I'll tell you when we get to the host house. Go on, hurry. What are you going to do now, sir? I'll make an example of Ransley that will teach the others a lesson they won't forget in a hurry. Mutiny among the Scarecrow's men is a worse danger than the soldiers are. Well, you have to postpone tomorrow's run, then. Oh, no, that cargo from France is too valuable for that. Yes, but if Ransley thieves part of it, he'll make the Scarecrow look a fool to all the rest. Uh, the government has sent an army to protect us. The army shall protect us. That's where you come in, John. Um, Good to Philip Brackenbury to be at the Knoll Hill Oast House at... Help, I'm low. village fair. Take the marsh road eastward. Hurry! Right load. Sam, to Hathaway's. This load is for Dimchurch, sir. Ransley, your load is for the people of Bonnington. Here we 
we go, lads. Granny, Dad. Look in. Leave her. She'll be in the way. Yeah, but Dad... Come on, get on with it. Oh, the King's name. Run for it, lads. Hold, Ramsley. against these wretched men. They were caught red-handed, with 20 kegs of contraband spirit in their possession, defrauding His Majesty's revenue. They have no defense. I demand that an example should be made of them, as a warning to all men and to their infamous leader. I demand that they suffer the extreme penalty of the law. Unless... Unless, as I am instructed by General Pugh, they here and now confide the name of their leader called the Scarecrow. In which case the Crown will not press for their death by hanging. I don't know who the Scarecrow is. I tell you, I don't know. Nobody knows. But you've seen him, spoken to him. Only to get orders when he called a meeting. I... I haven't... Where does he hold these meetings? Tell me that. Different places. Different every time. On the beach. On the marsh. In somebody's bar. Why protect him now? He betrayed you. Who is the man, Ransley? I don't know, sir. Or else I'd tell the court. I don't want to swing for the likes of him. Silence in court. That concludes the case for the prosecution, Your Worship. Joseph Ramsley. George Ramsley, James Ramsley. The court is left with no alternative. But by your leave, Your Worship. I, I just returned home and I found this note. Um, it's a threat, sir. And I, I do not care for threats. What's it? Hmm? If the Reverend Dr. Sin speaks for the prisoners on trial, he will answer to the scarecrow with his own life? Oh. Who would want to threaten you, Parson? Were you about to speak for these ruffians in the dock? How do you know that? Oh, well, General, words get spread, I suppose. I, I had mentioned to my Sexton Mips uh, a point of law that had occurred to me regarding this case, and uh, Mips is not averse to an audience at the inn, where many people spend their evenings. <laughs> <laughs> what point of law, Vicar? Well, one which, if you will allow me, would certainly save these unhappy prisoners from punishment, uh, were it proved true. I object to this interruption, Your Worship. The Crown demands... If you please, Mr. Frank. What is this point of law that occurred to you, Vicar? Well, well sir, uh, would this arch smuggler, knowing that the prisoners were false to him, as undoubtedly he did, would he waste 20 kegs of expensive spirit to bait his trap? I, I, I wondered if the contents of the kegs had been examined. 
If indeed they contain contraband, then of course the prisoners must stand condemned. But uh, should they not be examined first? Has counsel for the Crown any objection to this? No. No, of course not. Beadle. Go and open the cage. Uh, General, I trust I can rely on the protection of your troops for coming forward after this threat to my safety. Of course, of course. Worship. The kegs are filled with seawater. Every one we've tried. Seawater? Sea water. There is no law in England that can hang a man or even imprison him for carrying kegs of water. <laughs> <laughs> You were a fool, and now I know you are. You bungled this whole business. Yes, General. Trying to take the law into your own hands. Get out of my sight. Report back to Dover Castle. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for what you've done. You've escaped the law, Ransley, but your scarecrow leader won't let you escape him, nor any of his men who know you for a traitor if you stay in this district. You'd best get away as far as you can. Cut off this hook, but you're still on mine, Ransley. You've till tonight, that's all. Keep close watch on Ransley. Off you go. And you can watch Mr. Frank, the prosecutor. Jerry, please. Rum for me, Mrs. Waggett, please. Well, this case you came down for must have been a great disappointment to you, sir. And who might you be? Me, sir? Uh, Mr. Mipps, sir. He's sexton and verger, carpenter and undertaker. And what is more, right-hand man in matters spiritual and otherwise to the vicar, Dr. Sin. Indeed. You seem to mind every kind of business, except your own. Oh, that's very good, sir. Very good. If you want to know anything about anyone in these parts, I'm the man to come to. And being a servant of the church, the soul of discretion, and on the side of the law. Hmm. Well, I suppose you'll be on your way back to London tomorrow, now that your business here is over. Perhaps it isn't, Mr. Mipps. Perhaps it isn't. Allow me, sir. It's an honor for me. Thank you. Your very good health, sir. Yes, I felt for you in the court today. Did you? Hmm. Well, and your very good health, too. You say you're on the side of the law, Sexton. Well, naturally I am, sir. The law was thwarted today. You'll realize that. Ah, oh, that Ransley's a villain, sir. A villain. It is a wicked miscarriage of justice. 
How far away does this Ransley live? Oh, about an hour's ride on a good horse, sir. Can you get me a good horse without all the world knowing tonight? Tonight, sir. Why tonight? Can you get me a good horse, Sexton? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I can, I can get that for you, sir. But, um, mum's the word, eh? I'll meet you at the fork in the sea road in half an hour. I'll have the horse for you there, right? Oh, well. I'm for home and bed. Good night, Mrs. Waggett. Good night, sir. Good night, boy. Good night, Mrs. It's you, eh? What do you want with me? To talk to you. The prosecutor's just gone in. I know, I followed him here. Are all the Ransleys there? No, only him. The boys have run away and the old lady's gone. How can we hear what's going on? Well, this door leads to the kitchen. I'm getting out of here. Run away? Where are you going to run? This scarecrow fellow or his followers will stop you going. Unless you stop them first. Your life isn't worth that. Unless I help you. Which I won't do. Without you help me. You can't touch me now. You can't try me twice for the same offence. You were acquitted by a trick. You didn't know there was water in those kegs. The scarecrow knew it, Ransley. And if he knew that, he knows you plan to run. I've got to run. Not only from him and the others. General Pugh's after me, too. General Pugh? Put me in jail. Unless I turn King's evidence. You tell me what I want to know. And I'll offer you something much better than that. What do you mean? The reward for your leader, Ransley. Give me the names of the rest of your gang so that I can bring them to trial. Ah, and get me throat cut for certain. You'll get it cut if you stay. And if you run. Oh, leave me alone, can't you? Listen to me. The Department of Revenue will protect you if you talk. I can't talk! They won't even know it was you. And even if they did, you'll be a hundred miles away with enough money to start another life. They'll kill me for sure. They won't know. You won't even have to appear in court. Your written statement's all I need, and the signal system, and the hiding places for your loot. That'll do you no good. I don't know who the scarecrow is. He'll come forward when we've hanged a few of his men, or someone will give him up. You leave that to me. Give me some names, Ransley. You owe him nothing. And you can buy your freedom. You... the Scarecrow... General Pugh... You're driving me out of my head. Talk, and there'll be 999 more like this. The reward, you fool. Keep out of General Pugh's way. Bring your list of names to me. Twenty will do. I'll meet you this time tomorrow night at the castle ruins, and you can have the rest. Then you will be safe. Safe from General Pugh because you'll have done your duty. And safe from all the rest as well. 
fail me. And you are finished. Nobody will know. Nobody. Mr. Prosecutor, what do you want at this hour? I thought you left on the London mail coach. I'll leave when my business here is finished. You called me incompetent after today's fiasco. I've come to tell you that I'll make you eat those words. You have, have you? And how will you make me do that? By bringing to justice enough of the smugglers here to smash the Scarecrow gang. And probably catch him too. Just like that, eh? Well, well, well. And when will this haul take place, may I ask? This time tomorrow night. Oh. I want to make sure you'll be here to help me. Help you? How? Supply me with an armed escort when I go to round up these criminals. I don't imagine they'll come along without a struggle, General. What have you found out, lawyer? Have a squadron of your troops ready, standing by, at the old monastery, tomorrow night at this hour. And I'll tell you then. I'll show you, General. Tomorrow night at this hour, eh? Very well, I'll ride with the troops myself. Thank you. Good night to you, General. Mr. Fred! I hope this time you've not bitten off more than you can chew. It's a good thing there are more brains in my profession than the evidence would seem to show there are in yours. Good night again. <laughs> Ransley will sell us all, you can be sure of that. Selling the freedom, even the lives of 20 of his fellow marshmen won't bother him. We should stop him now. Get rid of him, sir. There'll be plenty willing to do it. Them as he's planning to hand over to the law. I have a better plan. One that will teach a lesson to all would-be traitors and to King George's revenue men who offer blood money. <laughs> Ransley? <laughs> Ransley?
got you. Why you pull me like this? I ain't done nothing. Tie me, Cash. I'll fight any two of you. What's wrong with you? You're my mates. I'm one of you, ain't I? No, Ransley. <laughs> Session. Uncover the second prisoner's eyes so that he can see the scarecrow's justice. You pack of scoundrels. In the king's name, I demand that you release me. Gag him. Now the indictment against the first prisoner, Joseph Ransley. You stand charged with treachery. How say you, guilty or not guilty? I ain't hurt you, nun scarecrow. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Cashier. First witness, Curl you. All right, the undersigned. Witness the accused Ransley's conversation with the prosecutor for His Majesty's Department of Customs and Excise on the night of the 16th. What? During which conversation the said Ransley agreed to turn King's evidence against the rest of us assembled here. Charge! Further, the accused agreed to hand over 20 names of men in our organization and to sell this list for gold to Prosecutor Fry. It's a lie. I ain't even spoken to him, except in the court. That time the parson got me off. You're lying, Ransley. You were offered gold to betray your friends. No. This gold. <laughs> Taken from Prosecutor Fragg, who came to keep his bargain with you. Next witness, Hellspite. I had the undersigned witness the second prisoner, Prosecutor Fragg, in the company of Mips, the sexton of Dimchurch, at the fork in the sea road. I followed the said Fragg across the marsh to the accused cottage. This, on the night of the 16th. Lies. It's all lies. <laughs> Silence. Stand down. And now my deposition, Ransley. On the last run of my gentlemen, you attempted to steal from us, were caught, and put on trial. Didn't hurt you none, and I was acquitted. Through the intercession of a parson who disobeyed my instructions not to interfere, I'll deal with him later. You told the prosecutor at your trial that you would betray me if you could. In spite of the oath you made with me, the oath that every man here has taken. If a man thinks he's going to be hanged, and his son's with him, he'll say anything. What kind of man will sell his friends to the hangman for gold, Ransley? I ain't done that. I never intended to. No. Empty his pockets. Here are the names he would sell. Perhaps your names are among them. You were taking that note to the prisoner flag tonight? All right, Cashier. So I was. You think you own us all. You were going to kill me. You drove my sons away. And the army was after me. Cheat, liar, traitor, convicted by your own words. Gentlemen of the jury, how say you? Is the prisoner guilty or not guilty? Guilty! Guilty! guilty. <laughs> Guilty it is. And this court sentences you to die accordingly. You dog, you're not fit to live. What are you going to do? No, no. 
gag him, Hellspike. Now, now, now. And spare us seeing him die a coward as well as a traitor. You, curl you, cover the lanterns. Justice is done. So end all men who have betrayed the Scarecrow and the people of the marshes. Bingo! Curlew, give my gentlemen the king's gold, share it among you, and remember the Scarecrow's justice. Now go, quickly! Let him down. Frank was still here. Bransley! Uh, 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 oh, no, no, no. You're dead, Bransley. Dead to all the men of the marsh who would otherwise kill you. I give you one hour to cross the county line and away from here, otherwise you'll really die. You're dead! Run for your life! <laughs> Aye, sir. I finished it yesterday. <laughs> Laughter, Sexton. Have you no respect for the dead? said, so end all traitors. And the Scarecrow's men still ride the marshes. Can nobody stop the villain? They'll still try, sir. Don't worry. They'll still try. Look. Archie! Save some space in your graveyard, Parson, for the Scarecrow. Because I swear to you, he'll be there. And soon. Out! Uh, good luck to you, General, and, and uh, take care with that cold you have. Forward! Your orders were to stamp out this smuggling, yet in the weeks you've been down there, it's grown worse. Well, sir? Well? The whole countryside protects the smugglers and their leader, Your Majesty. They see him as a benefactor. Protects, protects! My Home Secretary bombards me with figures of the drop in excise duties. I have to listen to sly jokes at my expense, at my army's expense. Cartoons appear in the public press, showing me dancing like a puppet on strings held by this fellow they call the Scarecrow. I send you extra troops at what happens. Nothing, nothing. I'm making a fool of yourself, you make a fool of me. I'm doing my best, sir, but as I said... Your best is not good enough, General. You let this scoundrel slip through your fingers, didn't you? Well, sir? 
Well? I did everything in my... Silence! I should relieve you of your command, perhaps. Hey, eh? Hey, eh, sir? If you'll give me a little more time... Time, I... time. I have a war in France, rumors of insurrection in America, and I must give you time, more money, more men, to deal with a pack of smuggling yokels in my own country. You're incompetent, lax, General. I'll stamp out this business, Your Majesty. I give you my word. Ah. Just one month, sir. I'll give you one month. The War Office said that you were a hard man, General. Well, sir, be hard. You hear me, eh? Be hard. Now go back to your command and use your brains. beat you once in a while. He's as clever as a fox. Do you play, General? No, I haven't got the patience for games. But you hunt the fox, though, don't you, sir? <laughs> well? General Pusa, squadron searching the marshes, cooperating with the naval pickets. I know, I know. All the press gang men who jumped ship at Dover have been recaptured, sir. Good. Except one. What? A man was seen heading for Dimchurch an hour ago, but we lost him. Permission to carry out house-to-house -house search, sir? Yes. Sir. Every house, you understand, and thoroughly. Spare no one. This is the chance I've been waiting for to turn this place inside out. I don't wonder a deserter would head this way. Why, General? Because your people here are lawless themselves. They shield this scarecrow and his smugglers, don't they? You've no proof of that. They do. And if I find one of them, any of them, hiding a deserter, there'll be some hanging here. Well. Oh. Night, Thomas. It's time I was getting home. Good night, you, Vicar. I'll see you okay. to the gate, sir. Hello. General? Every house they'll find Mr. Bates, the American rebel you're hiding. We'll have to move him. Come on. If you're the deserter, we're here to help, not harm you. I'm Dr. Sin, vicar of Dimchurch. Soldiers there. I saw them through the window. Harry. You heard General Pugh. They hang deserters from the Navy. Harry is the man they're looking for. The marshes are now under military law, sir. I have my authority from the King. If you have any objection, complain to him, sir, not to me. Thank you for dinner and good night. Good night to you, sir. Madam, Mr. Brackenbury. General, won't you let Philip stay a little longer? Just as a favor to me, 
please. Very well. Speak to Father now. All right, Kate. Could I talk to you a moment, sir? Hmm? Have I your permission to, to ask for Kate's hand, sir? No, sir. You have not. I understand that your family regards you as independent and rebellious, and they've cut you off. Am I right? Well, yes, sir. It's true. My father and I... And that you live on your army pay. I might know that you're not more interested in Kate's fortune than her hand. As Kate's father, sir, you may consider it your privilege to question my honor. But I'm afraid I do not. Good night, Sir Thomas. Good night, Mr. Brackenbury. I'm leaving. There's nothing more to say after that. Isn't there something to say to me? Father fights everybody. He only respects those who fight him back. And so do I. Aren't you going to fight for me? Oh, Kate. Do you know when we're in port, we're netted below decks like cattle? Fed and watered and penned and driven to the slaughter we... What's this? Vicar? Hello, Father. like a criminal. Hmm? I am a criminal, sir. Harry's the deserter they're looking for, Sir Thomas. You deserted? Escaped. They took me by force and I got away by force. Four years of my life they've had. Want to see the decorations I got in the King's service? I'm no longer going to be treated like a dog. Come over to the house. You look starved. I am, sir. You can't go to the house, sir. Philip Brackenbury's still there. I must get you away. L leave this to me, Sir Thomas. Yes, but how and we... ask no questions. If you know nothing, then you'll not have to lie when the Navy comes searching. I'll see you again, boy. As soon as I can. Don't worry. My sexton and I will deal with this. Uh, go with your father, John. soon find out. So will Dr. Sin. I must warn him to get Harry away at once. Hundreds of years of pride and privilege. I wonder what they think of me now. Running away like a stray dog. Cover that lantern. Well, 
Jones. Yes, sir. John warned me just in time. I got Mr. Bates here out of the inn five minutes before the soldiers came. Mr. Harry, I couldn't believe it when I heard it's good to see you, sir. Harry, this is Simon Bates from America. He's hunted by the law, too. Mr. Banks? How do you do, Mr. Bates? Deserter? No, preaching sedition. Freedom for the colonies. Yes, tell them whether to go. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Bates, you remember Broken Barn in the Bonington Hills? Take Mr. Harry with you and hide there till I send word. Enter through the barn doors, and under the fourth beam, there's a trap door leading to an underground stable. An underground stable? That's right. You'll be perfectly safe there. We'll get food to you as you need it, but whatever you do, keep under cover. Mr. Mipps, Dr. Sin, you're taking a big risk. So are you, and you're wasting time. Come on, off you go. Soldiers and pickets everywhere, sir. How are you going to get the two of them out? By the, uh, the first ship that delivers for the scarecrow. You hope. Hope is brightest when it dawns from fears. Coming. Halt in the king's name. What's this? We caught him and another one besides, sir. Call off the search. We have him. That's Mr. Harry, Sir Thomas's son. Who are you? All right. You'll find your tongue, I promise you. You've got to be sorry you were ever born, the pair of you. Take them both to Dover Castle. Well, either give me the information I want, here and now, or I'll hand you over to more forcible persuasion. I could have you hanged today, both of you. Apart from your stealing from me, you're already condemned, and you stand condemned a deserter. But turn King's evidence, I'll spare your lives. Who sheltered you all this time? This scarecrow who flouts the law down here? No. Then one of his men must have been. Answer me. No. And why did you head for these parts? Who did you think would hide you? This scarecrow, because he helped another scoundrel escape the King's service? Who are your friends here? Talk, and I'll exchange their lives for yours. Take them to the dungeons and see what answers you can get, by whatever means. Yes, sir. March! The vicar of Dimchurch, sir. Dr. Sin. Well? What do you want here, Parson? Uh, my duty is general. I'm chaplain to the jail. I'm here to serve Holy Communion to the prisoners. I normally report to the garrison commander before I do so. And Master Banks? Uh, uh, to assist me, sir. Well, it's not a duty I relish myself. The stench in the dungeon is strong enough to build another wall on. Our duties are not always made easy. For any of us. 
But the end justifies the means, eh? Even when those means include torture, General? Mr. Brackenbury is talking of those swine who just left. To be tortured? They hold the key to unlock the conspiracy of silence which protects this scarecrow madman, and I intend to get it. That's my duty. Tell me one thing, sir. If they had told you what they knew when you promised them their lives, would you have kept your side of the bargain? <laughs> Don't be a fool. Let her hang anyway. Of course, sir. With your permission, sir, I'll go to the dungeons now. Your servant, sir. Need an ally here. Wonder if I found one. Wake up on your feet. Show some respect to the chaplain, you dogs. Neil. Lift up your hearts, hope and trust. Let us pray. Naval picket! I leave reverence. I want six men. Come on, step lively if you don't want a rope sent across your backs. Get him trained! Press gang to poor devils. Get a lot aboard the lugger for HMS Defiant. Wave your mates goodbye, you dogs. We're gonna make men of you. You obstinate dogs. We haven't finished with you yet. Here we are again, mate. Six less mouths for you to feed. What? <laughs> with you and of mercy on you. I am about to conduct a service here, Jailer. I should like to be alone with the prisoners. But it ain't safe, Your Reverence. Let me be judge of that. Leave us. Yes, sir. We never know when. I see. Harry, Mr. Bates, I don't know by what means, but somehow I'm going to get you away from here before Pew breaks your spirit as well as your body. He'll never break us. And we'll never talk. There's no way out of here except in the coffin. Not for us. There must be. Trust me. All of you. Somehow I will get you free. Free? Free, sir? Not so loud. Repeat after me. Letteth now thy servant depart in peace. Letteth now thy servant depart in peace. For mine eyes have beheld thy salvation. For mine eyes have beheld thy salvation. I wanted to fly at them for what they'd done to Harry. Poor Bates. You did very well in there, John. Do you... you really think you... you'll be able to help them escape, sir? I... I don't know.
Stand against the door a minute, boy. I say so myself. Here it is, sir. I hope it works. It's the key to the whole plan. What is the plan, sir? The Scarecrow will tell you that tonight. Get word to all our men. There'll be a meeting at 10 o'clock tonight at Five Mile Barn. Tonight? Time is running out. Get on your way, Mips.
arms, mates. And don't tear them. They're coming no harm, lad. Go on, take off your uniform. Then tie the buzzards up. Upstairs, missus. Upstairs! <coughs> now, come on, hurry up, lads. Halt! Who goes there? Picket for the press men in the jail zone. I'll escort them. Sam. Forward. You wait outside the gate, powder monkey. Sit down. I'm for that. I'm late already. Sit down. Your deal. I give the orders here. Come on, your deal. You didn't shuffle them cards very well, did you? Yes, I did. You saw me. It was a fair deal. Now, fair to you, maybe. I think. All right. But you can take that grin off your face. What's wrong? Your idea to go on playing anyway. I think your trick, your trick's unnatural. Here, beat that one. Like him. And satisfy. And satisfy. And the next two. Your deal. Wait. Give me that. What was that? I'm Dr. Singh. Keep quiet and do as you're told. We'll get you away from here. Will you be able to walk? Are you strong enough? No noise.
Nothing. The Louts have probably been fighting. Let's get on with the game. What's this? Naval picket for the press men, sir. Dogs. You're in the king's service now. Quick march! What you want at my house? You, squire, and your daughter. Why, I'll have quite easy now, squire. No other in for servants, or my friend here will have something to say. The scarecrow needs you. The scarecrow? To act as hostage while he does a little business, squire. Come quiet, you'll not be armed. Make trouble, I'll blow your brains out. There's a carriage waiting in the lane. Now, not a word, so no one gets hurt. I was told to bring you as far as here, then leave you. God bless you all. I have to leave you, Harry. You're a brave boy. Give my love to Father and to Kate and say I wish I could have seen them. Hurry, John. Coming. Goodbye, Harry. Good luck. for some passengers here to take to Holland. Passengers? From here? Scarecrow. 
You rogue, what do you want with my daughter and me? You'll thank me before the night is out, Squire. What the devil? Here are your passengers, Dutchman. Come on! Hurry, hurry! Harry! Harry, you're free! How? What do you say now, Squire? Kate, it's your brother. Harry! Is it really you? Why, you've grown into a beauty. Oh. Take them to Holland, where they can board a boat for America. America? Take them off, my dear. You're in enemy waters, you smuggling rogue. Time to go, Mr. Banks. My men will escort you home, sir. Your servant, Mr. Banks. Good luck. So short a time. Goodbye, Harry. Take care. Write to us, remember. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Harry, get aboard! A new life, gentlemen. The new world. And freedom very soon. Bon voyage! Suspected nothing when you took the picket to the dungeons? I had no reason to, sir. Their papers were in order. Ah! Uh, the, 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 they didn't come to me with a key, sir. Neither did you. But they had a key. How? Didn't that seem strange to you? No, sir. I'm not familiar with jail procedure. The men's actions seemed normal and natural. The deserter, the American, they had the answer to everything I want. Through them, I'd have smashed the smuggling here. You fool, why didn't you see them or hear them taken if you were on duty? Unless you were drunk or fighting? No, no, sir. Get out! Yes. Imposters walk into the castle and out again with prisoners right under your very nose? You saw them, sir. You were at the gate when they marched through. It's all in my report, sir. Yes, yes, it's all in your report. I sent a copy to the Admiral, sir, about the deserter's escape. To the Admiral. And another copy to the Director of Public Prosecutions, sir. The Director of Public Prosecutions will report to the King. Thank you, Mr. Brackenbury. That was very thorough of you. My duty, sir. Duty? Dismiss. General Pugh was at the gate. Well, Sir Thomas, this is a strange story, you tell me. But, uh, scoundrel or no, this scarecrow fellow freed Harry where I couldn't and arranged for you to say farewell. As parson and squire, we must hope for this capture. But, uh, tonight, let's drink to him, shall we? Mm, well... I suppose so. We may see Harry again sooner than you think. Both you and I. I'm not staying in the army, Kate. I can't after this. I'm resigning my commission. And uh, let's drink to the young people, too. It's a good lad. Right for Kate. You'll see. Yes. Yes, let's drink to them. And Philip. Kate and the uh, scarecrow fellow. Whoever and wherever he may be, scoundrel.